morning everybody. I'm Paolo Turco from uh, Georis Gas and uh, let's go directly to start uh, this uh, section. Turbo expander one. The first paper is uh, the radial outflow turbine technology, impact on cycle, thermodynamics, and machinery fluids and rotor dynamic fissure. Uh, from uh, the presentation will be from uh, Claudio Spadaccini. Claudio Spadaccini is the founder and CEO of Exergy. Uh, Claudio Ernest is a master degree in mechanical engineer at Politecnico of Milan, having uh, uh, 15 years of working experience uh, in the field of renewable and uh, in recovery application. He's, he has authored uh, multiple articles and papers in system engineering and energy recovery application. And uh, he has developed the simulation software for organic drinking cycle. Please. Uh, I'm the founder and uh, the CEO of Exergy. Today I will uh, report to you the result of a comparison study that we have done in regard to a case study comparing three different technologies of turbine, being the radial inflow, the axial, and the radial outflow technology. Before to go into the presentation, just a few words about the, uh, you know, the background. Back in 2010, when we decided to enter into the OSC market, we had a question mark in our head. So how can we enter and we can compete into this market where you know, there are well-established competitors? And we had the feeling that in order to enter into this market, we needed to make some innovation. So, our, at that point, we had the idea to introduce the multiple stage radial outflow machine as a potential step in order to be more competitive, more efficient, and give more performance to the, let's say, organic ranking cycle engines. So going into the presentation, Exergy is a privately owned Italian company controlled by the Seci Macaferri Industrial Group. What we do? Exergy is a pioneer, as I said, of the multiple stage radial outflow turbine technology into the ORC. And what Exergy do is to undertake internally all the activities related to the development of this new technology. From research and development to uh, engineering, manufacturing, and uh, uh, project management and after sales activities. Our range of machine actually is from 100 kilowatt, let's say, to 5, maybe in the future also 10 megawatt would be available with this technology. Before to enter in the main uh, issue of the presentation, I just show you a selection of our plant in operation. Here you can see a geothermal plant, a biomass plant, and another biomass plant that are in operation right now in Italy. Let's go to the main topic of the presentation. As I said to you, I will present it to you a comparison of three different uh, technology based on a case study. The case study is uh, a neat heat recovery application in the range of 3 megawatt electrical. And for this, uh, uh, for this uh, case, for this application, we have optimized and we have uh, uh, 
uh, define it, uh, a cycle in order to compare the different uh, turbine and expander technologies. After this uh, optimization work, uh, we have defined this cycle that is based on cyclopentane and has the following uh, characteristic. The maximum pressure in, in, uh, is 30 bar. The temperature inlet to turbine is 260 degrees C. The pressure discharge from turbine is 0 0.8 bar. The, the terminal uh, temperature difference at the recuperator is 20 degrees. But let's look you know, at the main data of the cycle that are the most important in order to design and define you know, the, the geometry of, of the expander. That are the isotropic entropy drop that is relatively high to be an organic ranking cycle. It is 186 kilojoule per kilogram. That is, that is due to the fact that the molecule is heavy but not so heavy, and the fact that the temperature drop across the turbine is relatively high. But also look at the expansion ratio of the, of the, of the cycle. That is, the volumetric expansion ratio is 40, and uh, if you heard the presentation of Professor Mackey this morning, you heard how important is, you know, the volumetric expansion ratio in order to, to get efficiency into uh, to the turbine. Now we go to the, uh, the presentation of the different uh, turbine technology that we have compared. The first is the radial inflow. Radial inflow can be single stage or double, double stage in this case. Normally, the radial inflow technology for this uh, application is integral gearbox. It means that the wheel is directly installed on the pinion of the gearbox. It is high speed, it is not directly coupled to the generator. It is overhang. It means that the seal is only on one side and the wheel is uh, installed on the pinion of the machine. And, uh, can be oil or dry gas sealed, normally use slit bearings and as variable inlet geometry. The second solution, the second, let's say, well-established solution, I would say the most established technology into the organic ranking cycle market right now is the Two or three stage disc and diaphragm ax axial turbine. This turbine normally is much more simple, it's direct drive, there is no uh, need of any gear because uh, the, the rotational speed of the turbine is the same as the rotational speed of the generator. It is also overhang, means that all the bearings are on one side of the machine. It is oil sealed and normally use rolling bearings. The third, you know, technology we compared is our technology, is the multi-stage radial outflow turbine. Can be up to seven stage, but that is not a limit. This is theoretically we could we could also go above, but, but normally it doesn't make sense. It is a radial outflow with or without the last axial stage. So in some case, we can also combine all the radial outflow stages with the last axial stage. It is overhang, it is oil sealed, and use rolling bearings. Now we go into the result of the efficiency and the, let's say of, of the calculation that we have done with the above cycle, above specified cycle with the different technology. For the radial inflow configuration, the single stage configuration is not suitable for this case due to the very, very high expansion rates. We have an expand, a volumetric expansion ratio of 40, and the single stage 
cannot be applied or at least would result in a very poor efficiency if it would be applied in this case. The optimized double stage configuration with radial inflow we have developed is, is, a, is a machine with a high pressure stage rotating at about 19,000 RPM with a 300 millimeter wheel, a stage loading of 101, 1 1.01, and a flow coefficient of 0 0.28. That also according to this diagram that is by Nicholas Baines, result in an efficiency of 86%. The low pressure stage is uh, running much slower because the volume, the volume uh, flow is much higher. It is 9,150 RPM. It is close to 600 millimeters. As a stage loading, again, close to 1, it is 1 1.03, and the flow coefficient of 0 0.32, and result in 85% efficiency. <coughs> Those two efficiencies are related to the high speed pinion of the machine, are not at the generator speed. So considering a, a loss of about 1 to 2 percent, we assumed 1.5 percent losses, those two stages have about the same entropy drop. It means that both stages are making about you know, the same power. We get a total adiabatic efficiency at the low speed shaft of 84%. Going to the next <coughs> configuration, we have the axial configuration. For that configuration, we have evaluated many different solutions, considering a different number of stages and different degree of reaction. The solution, the solution that at the end was optimized, according to us, is a free stage solution with a very low degree of reaction. Let's remember that we have the assumption at the beginning that we have an overhang solution, so all the bearings are on one side of the machine. So, in order to define the number of stages, we also had to consider the rotor dynamics of the machine. And uh, the point is that the rotor dynamic of the machine give a limitation on the number of stages that we can apply to the shaft. Otherwise, the offset of the disc is too far from the bearing and the bending mode are too low in frequency. Anyhow, you know, the optimized solution we found is a 3,000 RPM machine with a shaft diameter of 140 millimeters and three discs, three stages, disc and diaphragms. The first stage, the first disc is 1,030, the second is 1,050, and the third is 1,100 millimeters. That, this is the diameter of this disc. And the rotor blade eye in the first stage is a 6 millimeters, this, the second 24, and the third is a 62. And the efficiency is quite lower, it is close to 80, let's say 79% is the result we found for that. In the radial outflow configuration, we, also in this case, we studied, you know, a number of configurations, but having no limitation due to the single disc arrangement of the machine in the number of stages, we had the possibility to select a much higher number of stages. This result in a much lower volumetric expansion ratio on each stage. We are from 40, you know, you have to divide, you know, uh, you have to make the square wrote six times, you know, for, to get about two in the volumetric expansion ratio on each stage. And so the result is that we define it as an optimized solution, a six stages machine with five radial outflow stages and one axial. The axial is installed on the, on the same disc as where, you know, the, 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 the outflow 
the radial outflow and installed. The result are, okay, the machine is a direct drive, is uh, 3,000 RPM, 100, the, the, we assumed the same shaft diameter, 140 millimeters. We have only one disc, so we have only one disc diameter, that is 1,100 millimeters. And those are the rotor blades I. You see that we are starting with nine, that is 1.5 times the six that we have before, nine and a half, 13, 19, 32, and 62 for the last axle. And the efficiency is 84%. In order to better explain the, uh, uh, the limitation of the rotor dynamics and the three stages, so we have, uh, I just report to you the, the, the rotor dynamic comparison for the axial and the, and the radial outflow machine. The radial inflow has not the rotor dynamic, uh, let's say, uh, constraints because each stage is installed on a different pinion. So if you add one stage, you have a different pinion and you have not an, an additional offset from the PM. In the axle machine, we are considered to have those three discs. You remember the first disc having 1030 millimeters and 227 kilos weight, so this disc, and an offset of 190 millimeters from the bearing to the disc. The disc 2 has about the same diameter, the weight is a bit less due to the higher blades, and the offset of this disc from the bearing is 270, 80 millimeters more. It's something like to add 80 millimeters every time so we add one disc. In this case, the, the, the disc free is again, you know, but uh, one, 1,100 millimeters diameter, 350 millimeters offset. The result is that the first bending mode frequency of this configuration with those assumed data is 3,400 RPM. In the radial outflow configuration, when we have just one disc, similar, let's say, diameter, a weight that is obviously higher because we have a six stages on that, but a similar offset, 195 instead of 190, we get more than 1,000 RPM more in the stiffness of the machine. And that gives a very big advantage from the mechanical and the vibrational uh, point of view. Now, Comparing the, the efficiency, in order to give you the, the, a better you know, understanding of the difference uh, of the efficiency, uh, mainly you know, between the, the, the axial and the radial outflow machine, you can see here in this diagram that is something like a, is, is a Smith diagram, a modified Smith diagram, where in the Ashissa we have the volumetric outlet flow from the machine divided the volumetric inlet of the machine, and uh, in the other axis, we have the specific speed of the machine. You can see here the three stages axial, first, second, and third stage. And here the six stages uh, radial outflow. You see that all the radial outflow stage have a volumetric expansion ratio that is, uh, you know, the first four stages are below two and just the number five and number uh, six, uh, where the blade eye is already quite high, are above two. And this lead, this is the reason why we can get higher efficiency. I will go to the conclusion. And uh, <clears throat> so as a conclusion, I can say that, you know, at the end of our study, we find that, you know, the the, the radial outflow machine and the radial inflow, the two-stage radial inflow, achieve a, a greater efficiency than the axial machine. And uh, the, 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 the radial inflow machine is, uh, uh, has an higher complexity of uh, uh, 
due to the fact that there are two turbines installed on the same gear. And uh, the, the reason why the radial outflow machine can accommodate, uh, can achieve a higher uh, efficiency with, uh, let's say, a simple uh, one case in construction is due to the fact that there is the possibility to install a higher number, number of stage on a single disk. I have finished. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, Mr. Paracini, I think uh, there is no time for question. You had a bit. Just one question. Okay. okay. If you have a very big disk in your turbine, you must have a very big thrust force. Is that right? Yes. Do you have any compensation for this thrust force? That is a key point, obviously. <coughs> the axial thrust compensation is a key point in those machines, and we have uh, our really, we have developed our, let's say, proprietary system in order to, to compensate that. I cannot tell you detail about that, I'm sorry. Another <laughs> problem is the vibration of the blades. No problems? We have not registered any problem of that, also because of the, from the construction point of view, there are many details. So obviously, you know, the construction of a radial outflow machine is, uh, is less common, you know, than uh, an axial machine. And many, many details uh, have, uh, have been developed in order to, to, to build okay. in reality this kind Thank of Thank you machine. very much. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you very much.